Hello, my name is John and today we are looking at the F-86 Sabre again and I want to show you how to use the guns for air to air combat. First of all, down here at the weapon controls panel, let's go ahead and switch um, the main armament switch to the guns position. The sight camera and radar position just enables the A4 sight, the gun camera which is not simulated, and the radar. And uh, the guns position allows us then to fire the guns. And basically, you want to switch to at least the sight mode about 10 minutes before entering the battlefield, because in the real world, the A4 sight installed on the F86 needs about 10 minutes to spin up and warm up. And uh, obviously, you want to enter the battlefield as a working sight. This is not simulated in the F86 Sabre at this point, though, so you can just switch it on whenever you like. And when switching to gun mode, you can uh, check if your guns are actually ready to fire by looking at those three lights down here. And those lights um, indicate where whatever the upper, lower or middle pair of guns is ready to fire. And with the selector up here, you can actually set if you want to fire all gu guns or just a pair of guns, like the lower, the middle and the upper pair again. Which might be useful if you try to engage a big target like a bomber and you don't want all six guns to fire just two of them to preserve ammo you can switch it to one pair if you're liking and then uh, those lights will not eliminate if the gun is not ready to fire this is either when it's not switched on when the switch down here or um, when basically the gun jammed or is out of ammunition so um, you can refer to those those lights to check if basically your guns are ready to fire. There is no other uh, ammunition status indicator though in the airplane, so um, it's quite hard to tell if, if there's just two rounds left or if there's a full magazine left. Obviously you would probably know how much rounds you already fired or have at least somewhat of a feeling. Um, as it's usual with the old aircraft, there's a lot of pilot work and pilot consideration necessary. No fancy computers helping you out. Anyway, um, what we need to do next is we need to mechanically uncage the A4 sight. And uh, the mechanical caging should be set most of the flight. And uh, you just want to go out of the caging mode whenever you do attack on an aerial or ground target. And uh, the mechanical caging protects the gyros from uh, vibration and basically forces which are created by maneuvering and stuff like that and which could cause damage to the gyros or make them uh, or de make them degrade over time so just make sure you uncage before you go into an engagement next thing we have to control up here is the wingspan selector we can use this selector here to set uh, the wingspan of our target we expect and uh, we know today it's um, the MiG-15 so we will set the wingspan to 30 feet and then this, as you can see, adjusts the diameter of the outer circle. And this is exactly similar to the P-51. And um, you can adjust the wingspan of your target together with the... Uh, this allows you to set the range. And the range is displayed on this indicator here in feet. In hundreds of feet. And um, you can basically... You can see the wings... Uh, you can see the target. If you can see the target, you will use um, the outer circle the inner diameter of the outer circle here to um, determine uh, the range basically now the range is set to 1200 feet and if for example the target just would fill half of um, the circle up here we would decrease the uh, increase the range until it would fit our target just nicely and uh, this is used to set the range and uh, could be found on many of the old aircraft for example uh, especially in the P-51, but also in the Sabre, and um, hopefully we will also be able to see it in the upcoming MiG-21. That's just a small side note. And um, next thing we have here, that's the final thing we will need for in our engagement, is the radar range sweep. The F-86 uh, has a radar, which uh, is nothing compared to those modern radars. It just will allow you to uh, get an um, estimate of the range, so um, the radar will adjust the range so you don't have to set the range by comparing the wingspan to the actual target size yourself but the radar can do that for you and this uh, control knob up here allows you to um, basically adjust the radar focus or the sweep 
and um, this is used when you're close to the ground and the radar might uh, pick up ground clutter which then gives you a wrong range, a range indication so basically if you try to intercept maybe a, a bomber or something low in low level flight you want to um, reduce the radar range sweep so that you get the actual range to the target and not the range to um, the ground but um, in up in this altitude we can um, leave this on the maximum sweep because you don't really have any ground to clutter up here and uh, this is basically all we need to uh, adjust for now and uh, just one point uh, or one thing I want to point out the radar is working in F-86 Sabre in the current version of the simulation however there, there seems to be a bit of a range limit currently the radar will not pick up anything uh, above or further away than six 1,600 feet and um, I assume reading some post and form this is a bug because obviously the radar should be able to pick up targets further than that especially if the range go or the range indication goes up to 3,000 feet or stuff like that so um, um, I assume it's a bug and um, it probably will be changed in the future I, I guess there is no proper documentation available so it's a bit hard to tell but um, we just assume that for now but anyways um, once the um, target is getting basically ranged by the radar, the red light will start to flicker and once you get a proper range, the red light will start to light continuously. So if there is continuous red light, um, your range ranging is correct. So just keep an eye on that for now. I'll just spawn in an enemy make just ahead of us. As you can see, the radar already started to flicker. And I will just unpause the simulation now. And we will follow the make and try to shoot it down. And as you can see, the radar range scale is jumping around and the light is flickering. And um, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but we can just we know for now that the target is further away than 1,200 feet. And once it gets closer, we will see the range the radar ranging work properly. And we could also, uh, in a dogfight, you want to hold down the electrical caging key, like if you do a turning fight or something, so that the bore sight or the paper stays in the middle. But um, and then once you have the paper or target you want to release it and then adjust uh, adjust your flight path to get the paper over target. And here it just gradually get closer to the target as you can see, or hopefully you can see it's already coming closer right now. Just slow down a bit and the range the ranging should start to pick in a few seconds. And as you can see, now the paper stabilized. The ranging indicates us a, a distance of a thousand feet. It's a good distance to shoot. Just put a few bursts to the target. The gun is not doing very much damage at this point, but as you can see, he's trading smoke already and probably catch fire in a few more shots. And um, in the turning fight, basically, as you can see right now, the, um, the inner circle or the inner diameter of the circle represents the approximately the wingspan of the target. And you can use that if you don't have the radar available for whatever reason. You can see the target is creeping a bit further out. Now we lost the range, but still we can use the... still good enough to shoot the target. And then finally he loses his engine and ejects. That's basically how you engage a target, a normal moving target with the guns. And um, obviously, it works very similar in dogfights, although that is quite more complicated to keep situational awareness and all stuff like that. And it's probably recommended to just try and figure that out yourself. You can use the same procedures. This is the theory, and uh, dogfighting is very similar to that. Uh, you use the same systems, obviously, just handle it differently. But um, that's all for today. I hope you liked this video and have a safe flight. See you later.